Welcome back to our Question of the Week series. Let's continue. Once again, we will hide the answer choices until we get to that point of the question. And as always, we start with the last sentence first and then read the rest of the vignette. What is the most likely to have caused this condition? A 56-year-old female is recovering at the hospital from a suspected bacterial pneumonia. Over several days, she develops fever, rash, dysuria, and urinary urgency. Your analysis shows a specific gravity of 1.002 with hematuria and mild proteinuria. Renal biopsy shows partial effacement of the tuberointerstitial structures with pronounced edema and infiltration of the interstitium with polymorphonuclear leukocytes, eosinophils, and lymphocytes with papillary necrosis. So what is the most likely to have caused this condition? So we know they've been in the, in the hospital for bacterial pneumonia. That tells me they're being treated with some type of medication. So I'm probably thinking this medication is causing this. Fever, rash, dysuria, urinary urgency, and then we're having these lab values, and then we have our renal biopsy giving us this um, partial effacement of the tuberous interstitial structures and all of the infiltrates into the portions of the kidney. So let's look at our answer choices. Take a minute. Come up with your answer and write your answer in the comments below. A. Antibiotics. Well, just from the beginning, having bacterial pneumonia could mean that they're on antibiotics, so I'm thinking that could be a possibility. We know antibiotics can cause some problems. Chronic hypertension, probably not going to be a, a acute onset of all of this just due to her chronic hypertension, so that's not something I'm going to look at. Lead ingestion. Once again, lead ingestion is more of a chronic problem, not going to immediately pop up while this patient's in the hospital. I'm already going to mark that out just due to this issue. Multiple myeloma. While with multiple myeloma, we can see uh, eosinophilic casts and other uh, giant cells associated with it. We're not going to see this type of presentation with multiple myeloma. Um, so I'm going to take multiple myeloma out. And then Wegner's granulomatosis. Uh, while Wegner's can cause renal damage, uh, this is a, uh, a focal segmental glomerulonephritis, not uh, something more of an acute, um, probably this seems to be more of an acute interstitial nephritis. Okay, so I'm going to take E out. So that leaves me with A. So we talked about the, this patient's in the hospital getting medications already, so it could be a medication. The only one on this list is A, so that leaves me with A as my final answer. And A is the correct answer. So this is, as I mentioned, acute interstitial nephritis. So what we're seeing here, fever, rash, we can't concentrate the urine, so the urine has a low specific gravity. And then our biopsy findings that we saw, uh, that is all classic presentation of interstitial nephritis. Um, what causes interstitial nephritis? Drugs is going to be our most common cause. So antibiotics uh, like beta-lactams, sulfonamides, uh, rifampin, quinolones, all of those can cause acute interstitial nephritis. Uh, Anticonvulsant drugs can also cause acute interstitial nephritis. And then there's other uh, organisms like bacteria and viruses that can cause it. So on the bacteria side of things, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Legionella can all cause acute interstitial nephritis. And viruses like uh, CMV, Epstein-Barr, HIV, all of those can cause uh, acute interstitial nephritis as well. But like we mentioned, chronic hypertension can cause some kidney issues, but it's not going to give us that interstitial inflammation and papillary necrosis. Um, and fever and rash would just be completely out of the ordinary for chronic hypertension to cause uh, those type of symptoms. Lead ingestion, uh, that does damage the kidney. So this is another thing. They're going to give you a lot of things that will give you uh, kidney damage, but they're a different type of kidney damage. So this is a chronic, long, prolonged uh, course associated with lead ingestion and lead poisoning. Uh, it's not consistent with this acute picture that we see with this particular question. And we've already mentioned uh, multiple myeloma and how that doesn't really fit. That multiple myeloma, remember these, this is our Benz Jones proteins. And then Wegner's. Wegner's uh, is a focal segmental glomerulonephritis. 
and this gives us uh, those crescent formations. Uh, it does it does also give us some pulmonary disease, so that could confuse you a little bit. It does also give us some pulmonary disease, so a patient that doesn't present with any pulmonary disease but has the renal disease uh, is probably going to mark that as an uh, option out for you uh, because of the lack of the pulmonary uh, associations.